there's no need to fear. Underdog is here. Time again for the Underdog Show, starring that champion of champions, Underdog. When criminals in this world appear and bring the laws that they should fear and question all who see or hear, the cry goes up so far and near for underdog. Sweet Polly Purebred, while investigating rumors of a snowman in July, had fallen into the clutches of Simon Bar Sinister and his snow gun. Help! Help! <laughs> you shall be my most beautiful snow woman. <laughs> Prepare yourself, Simon says. Hey, boss, I got an idea. Possibly. Yeah. Why not send this here sweet Polly back to a TV show and let her tell the whole city to give up? Or else, you'll snow them all. Ooh, wonderful, Cad. My boy, you're becoming almost as sinister as I am. <laughs> Come along, sweet Polly. We have work for you. Help! Help! Meanwhile, high in the sky, the fearless underdog was searching desperately for Simon Bar Sinister. His laboratory is down below, so hip, 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 and away I go. There's no need to fear. Underdog is here. Yoo-hoo, Simon, yoo-hoo, yoo-hoo. I have come to capture you. But Underdog was all alone. And in the heart of the city, at the bottom of the city's tallest building, Sweet Polly was telling her TV audience, Oh, dear viewers, atop this very building is the fiend, Simon Bar Sinister, with his snow gun. Unless the city does just as Simon says, he will turn everyone into snowmen and snowwomen. <laughs> I want money and power! And money and power! And money and power! Yes, dear viewers. It seems that all is lost. Oh, where is our hero? Where, oh, where has my underdog gone? Oh, where, oh, where has he gone? With my ultrasonic ears, I hear a cry for help from Polly Deer. <laughs> save the town. I'll stop Simon with a real shakedown. And true to his word, Underdog grasped the tall building and began shaking it wildly. Wait! Stop that, you hair-brained Hercules! You're shaking my whole building apart with my tenants inside! All right, sir, I won't shake your place. I'll fight Simon face to face. <laughs> Be careful, underdog. Watch out for the snow gun. All right, Simon, you've had your fun. Now I'm stopping you and your snow gun. No one can stop the snow gun, not even you. Simon says, go snow. I feel the snow, but on I go. Simon says, go snow! Go snow! Go snow! Go snow! Look, boss, you got him. You stopped underdog. Mm. Look, he snowed underdog. Now all is lost. Run for your lives. He's falling this way. Oh, woe is me. Nothing can save us now. 
Yes, it looked like the end for Underdog and the city. Is Underdog really finished? Is there no hope for our mighty hero? The amazing answer lies ahead in our next episode. Go, go, gophers, watch them. Go, go, go. Two little Indians, no others near. Colonel, he vows these two soon disappear. Fighting the army blue soldiers galore. What can two Indians do? Go, go, gophers, watch them. Go, go, go. Go, go, gophers, watch them. Go, go, go. Here comes the colonel with his sergeant. Both are roaring and a charging. Go, go, gophers, watch them. Go, go, go. Go, go, gophers, watch them. Go, go, go. at the big little horn, Sergeant. There I was. Indians to the left, Indians in front, and Indians to the right. Then suddenly, from the rear... Help! Help! The General. The General Nuisance. Uh, what are you doing here? I'm here because Washington wants to know why you haven't been able to handle two measly Indians. You don't understand, General. These gopher Indians aren't measly. They're dangerous. Uh, Sergeant! Saddle two horses. We're going out to see those dangerous Indians. Well, we've been riding for hours and still haven't seen any Indians. Well, I'm hungry and thirsty. We'll stop here for lunch. I'll go to the water hole and fill our canteens. I'll see that you do. <laughs> <laughs> Blast it, Colonel! Can't you keep on your feet? You're muddying up the water hole. I was pushed, General. It must have been those gopher Indians. Well, that's absurd. There's not a soul in sight. Now see if you can at least fix some lunch. I've made a delicious stew, General. I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Well, I certainly hope you cook better than you catch Indians. Oh, you like this. Your face is sure to light up when you taste this. Ooh. Help! Help! I'm on fire! Ah. Ah. The gopher camp should be around that bend. Good. We'll ride right in. Oh, no, General. We can't ride in without troops to protect us. Troops against two Indians. But they're dangerous, General Newsom. They're wild and ferocious and... Trinkets, buy them nice Indian trinkets. Get them cheap here. So, Colonel, ferocious, are they? Yeah, everything about trick. What did he say? Him say gopher Indians love army. Hope army love gopher Indians. Give this trinket to General. Thank you. That's most kind. Mount up, Colonel. I've seen all I need to see. But it's a trick, General. It's a trick. Colonel, I think you need a rest. A permanent one. I'm going to have Washington send a new officer to replace you. Uh-oh. If General send out new officer, maybe we get real trouble. Colonel, easy man to fool. Too bad we lose him job. Oh, we save Colonel's job. How we do that? Oh, we scare General. We have fun. Believe me, General Nuisance, these two Indians are dangerous. That was only another of their tricks. Nonsense! Regulation 5236J reads. I know. Indians are Indians. <laughs> It's never too late. I'll save you, General Nuisance. All right, Ruffles, weather and running board. I'm coming out to get you. <laughs> Me understand. We act afraid. Charge! <laughs> You can be sure, Colonel, that I will tell Washington how you ran off those Indians. You should get a medal. Bully, bully. Very kind of you, General Nuisance. Well, Sergeant, I guess I showed those gopher Indians who's boss. 
Seems like the colonel always gets it in the end. See you all in our next adventure. Exciting climb. Commander, I must be good. I was making the climb alone. Except for bearers to carry supplies and weapons. We soon encountered a howling blizzard. My trusty bearers were unable to keep up with me. My tremendous strife, don't you know? And then it happened. An avalanche of snow. Deftly, I jumped aside. But the snow completely covered my bearers. There I was, alone in the blizzard. At that moment, I found myself facing a tribe of horrible monsters, the abominable snowmen. I raced up the mountain with the screaming monsters hot on my heels. I reached the top ahead of them, but there I could go no further, trapped by the abominable snowmen. But what did you do? I did the only possible thing. I whipped out my trusty lighter, sparked it into frame, and melted the abominable snowman. Then I simply used one of the monster's shields as a snow sled. Then sped to the bottom of the mountain, a conquering hero. Absolutely unbelievable. Quite. The mighty underdog had been knocked out of the sky. Simon Bar Sinister's snow gun had turned underdog into a helpless snowman and sent him zooming toward the ground. Run for your lives, he's falling this way. Oh no, I can't look. My poor, poor underdog. Maybe we could defrost him. Come on, everybody. Give us a hand. So they tried to defrost the snowy underdog. They tried heated fire hoses. But that failed. So they tried salt to melt the snow. But again, failure. Finally, they even tried heating the icy underdog over a fire. But nothing worked. It's no use. <laughs> this is the end of Underdog. And of us as well. Now Simon Bar Sinister will rule us all. All right, my slaves. Put all your money and jewels in front of that building. Then go home and wait for my orders. If you don't do just as Simon says, we will get this. It seemed there was nothing, nothing in the world which could stop Simon Bar Sinister and his snow gun. But then... Look, look there. Oh, no, it can't be. But it was. All alone, with help from no one, Underdog was defrosting. But Underdog, how? Oh, how did you do it? We thought the snow gun had finished you. <laughs> well, that snow gun stopped me frostily, but my radiant heat defrosted me. But what of Simon? How will you stop him? If at first you fail your deed, try again till you succeed. Hey, boss, look at there. Underdog is back again. Back? 
<laughs> well, who cares? The snow gun stopped him before, and it can do it again. Simon says, go snow. But Simon had not reckoned with Underdog's amazing speed. Underdog dodged the ray by zooming around and around the top of the building. There he is, boss. No, there. Uh, over there. Uh, no, over there. Uh... Faster and faster sped Underdog. And as Simon and Cad went round and round trying to aim the snow gun, they got dizzier and dizzier and dizzier until finally... has won. He's captured Simon Bar Sinister. Here's Simon and Cad and the snow gun too. Put them in jail where they can't harm you. But Underdog, what about all the poor people that Simon snowed? Like this. Will they never be the same again? My atomic breath, I promise you, will be frost them all as good as new. Look, in the sky, it's a plane. It's a bird. It's a frog. A frog? Not plane or bird or even frog. It's just little old me. Under <laughs> Underdog. <laughs>